It's always a bad day when you crash your machine. Uh, some of the most common reasons I crash are because I set the wrong offset in cam, G54, 5, whatever, or because I probed the wrong part in the machine. Uh, so today I'm gonna show you guys some tricks, macro magic, to hopefully make sure that that never happens to you again. I'm Justin from Toolpath and let's get started. So the process starts by establishing your zero point. If you've never used a zero point system, Really, all it means is a fixed known point that you can pick up reliably in the machine. So here, because we have a Speedio, which doesn't reach all the way to the table, and I have a pretty short probe tip, um, I've decided to put my zero point on top of a riser. Generally though, you can just put this gauging pellet right down on your zero point and then probe it in. We're gonna probe the center of this bore. That'll be my X, Y. And then I'm gonna probe the top of this uh, riser for my Z. That will be my zero point. And then forever, I'm just calling that my zero point. Everything will be referenced off that. And our goal here is to probe the zero point and then get the numbers, the, the physical offsets in the machine to match the offsets that Cam is expecting. Quick tip for you guys, never run a probe without a probe halo. Make sure you don't crash. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and probe this point in now. We'll go find the X first. We're just probing for the center of the bore. And then we'll probe the Z. But because I have that probe halo on and a probe tip that's a little short, I actually have to take the gauging pallet off to probe the Z. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that and we'll come back when we have that probed. I probed into G56 here. I did that just to make it easier to see it on the screen. Normally you'd store your zero point in a pretty high numbered offset. G59 is common or even one of your top numbered extended coordinates so that you don't accidentally overwrite it. Another pro tip is once you have your zero point to write those numbers down somewhere. Um, but here's our probed point. This is what we were looking for here. Uh, so we've got these offsets here. Now these are offsets from the machine's uh, machine coordinate space. So they're from what the machine thinks 000 is. Now the challenge here is that we have to sync up our CAD model uh, that we use in CAM, our machine model, with the machine. So we need to find where the physical location of the machine is to have our offsets match. So here we have a negative 9.1297 in X negative seven point something in Y, and three, positive 3.4 something in Z. Um, so these are the critical numbers. If we can get our post-processor in Fusion to spit out these numbers for where it expects your WCS to be, then we can write a macro to compare the numbers from your post, from your G-code to the expected values and subtract them. And as long as they're the same to within some tolerance, you're good to go. You can choose the tolerance, but probably 10 or 15 thou would be a good number. Uh, and if they're bigger than that, that means you probe the wrong point, set the wrong offset, etc. Got these machine coordinates. These are the, because we're still centered around our zero point, we're off a little bit in Z. Um, but what I want to show you guys is where the zero is on the table. Um, so I'm going to raise the machine up a little in Z here, and then I'm going to jog it over and I'm actually just looking at this number here. I'm trying to drive X and Y to zero uh, in the machine space. Now, depending on your machine setup, you may or may not be able to go to exactly zero, but it looks like I can get there on this machine. And this is gonna be useful for the CAD part portion of it. So there we go. Now I happen to know that for brothers, zero is on the table for Z. So physically that's where that is. And then we can just look in the machine now and see like drop down this point, right? In fact, I can even drop this down all the way in Z here, as low as it'll go. And we can see that for this machine, it thinks absolute zero, zero, zero is somewhere on the back corner of this table. Now it's not on the corner, it's not physically here, but that's okay. We know roughly where this is. And so now our job is to modify our CAD model so that when it spits out a work offset, we get back these numbers. And then we can use those to check and verify that everything's working correctly. Now we've gone into CAM here. Uh, I've got a setup made here. It says auto setup because I programmed this with Toolpath, but it, it doesn't matter. We're not gonna use any of the Toolpaths here. The, all that really matters is that I've got this setup here and it's aligned with you know, how I probed it in, in the physical machine. The next thing we wanna do is attach our machine model to this. So I'm gonna grab this demo one, which has the origin at the center of the table. That's how a lot of machine models are set up by default. 
Now, on the brother, we know that the physical WCS, 000, rather, the physical origin is somewhere over in this corner. And we want to get our X, Y, our X, Y, and Z offsets to match in CAM what they are in the machine. So what we can do here is we can post this out, and this is going to use a specially prepared post that has some modifications in it. I'm going to zero these edits out here. You'll see why in a second. And we can just go ahead and post that out. We don't care about any of these toolpaths. There already happens to be a file there. And here we go. We've got this NC program, and at the very top, we see this code right here. And this is critical. This is the macro that I wrote to check the WCS. So we're calling a macro here, and then we're checking with offsets x0, y0, z, 3.4, 252, a tolerance of, of 10,000, and we are checking into G56. So that's the WCS we're checking. So we know from before that we had different values in there, uh, around negative 9 and around negative 7. And so that's what we're looking to recover from our WCS. Now interestingly, we can look at why that Z, where that WCS Z offset comes from using the inspect here. Change the orbit. And we can see that this is 3.4252. And if we go over here, that's the exact same value we've got there. So what we know right now is that relative to where Cam thinks the machine origin is, we're centered at 000, or 00 and 3.4252. So what we need to do is edit this, and this post has been set up with a post-processing parameters to help do that. So we can look at this, go over here, and we can see that if I set this to say negative 9 and this to say negative 7.25 and hit uh, post, we'll, we will rewrite over that value, and now the negative 9 and the negative 7 are here. So these give us the offsets that we need to align our machine model with our actual physical model. So once you've calibrated those values, you never have to change them again. Now there is another way to do this. Uh, the other way is We'll go back in here so we can see the machine. The other way is to adjust your machine model so that its origin is located in the correct place. I'm not going to show how to do that. Fusion's a little finicky about it. It involves translating the machine model and the machine builder space and then retranslating the part attachment point to get it back to where you want. Um, so maybe we'll do another video about how to do that if you're interested. But this is the easy way to do it right here. And so that's what we're starting with. And it's simply to... Uh, work with whoever helps you write your post to get these parameters set in here and then you can train those in. So I'm going to go look up what those values were from the machine and then we'll get those dialed in here. Okay, we went and checked the machine and we know what those values are on the machine now. So we can go into here and we can reset this to be more accurate. We can set this to be minus 9.1297 and 7, negative 7, point 9.485. Uh, and we will leave the Z offset alone uh, because I think that'll be fine. Uh, it's slightly, slightly off by about 7 thou from where it is in the model, but we'll let that be part of the error tolerance. So now we can post this out. Just like before, we'll overwrite it. And here we go. We've got this same verify WCS positions call. And now we can see negative 9.1297, negative 7.485, and a Z of 3.4252. We're accepting 10 thou error, and we're checking against WCS 56. Now, uh, I happen to have set this correctly, but I have to admit that very, very often I forget to do this step and change it off of zero. So we'll go ahead in here and we'll repost this. And we'll see here that now it's going to show WG54. 
And so when we go run this on the machine, and I'll show you that in just a minute, it's going to check that these values match what's in G54. I'm going to save this out. I'm also going to save out 1002. Uh, but in that one, I'm going to have the correct WCS. Oops. Six. No. Three. And then this should be 1002 now, just so I have both programs. We'll post it out. And so now we have one with G56 and one with G54. We can go run them both and see which one will error out. And the point here is that that macro call right here, what it's doing, 8901, is checking these values, X, Y, and Z, against the values stored in this offset. And if they match to within this error, then it'll let you run your program. And if not, you're going to get an alarm on you know, line five of your program. So that's how this works. We're on program 1001, G54. We know, whoops, G54 is the wrong values. We were looking for G56. So we'll go back to our program. We will run it. And we get this WCS in the wrong place error. And that is exactly what we want. We want our physical machine synced up with our machine model so that these numbers here in your posted out program have to match within your tolerance to the actual work offset you picked. So we're gonna release the macro stuff that we did to make this work. Uh, I'll get some help from the community to write macros for Brother and Fanuc too. Uh, and maybe even Heidenhain and Siemens if I can find somebody to help me. And we'll put out the post stuff. Uh, I'll put it all up on a Git repository somewhere so that folks can get to it. You can edit your own posts or you can ask the folks who edit your posts for you for help. But hopefully that will help you guys avoid crashing by syncing up your machine model. And hopefully that'll help you guys push the button with a little bit more confidence. That's what it's going to do for me.